we wrap up November, we're entering the holiday season, but the hustle and bustle is not just in the stores, it's right here on Wall Street. We got a lot going on this week, but the highlight is, of course, Stephen Guilfoyle on Modern Wall Street, so let's give it to him. Hey, Stephen, nice to see you. It's nice to be back, Vazi. Nice to see you. Oh, awesome. Well, Stephen, I got to give it to you. Some bragging rights here. You've been stubborn as much as a bull for this bull market that we've been seeing. What did you know that the skeptics didn't? I just knew that economies were growing, interest rates were low, there was no inflation. We were reliant upon earnings, but we were actually seeing earnings growth, which we just got done with quarterly earnings just last week or so. And although the, the pace dropped off a little from the last two or three quarters, it was still pretty nice. We still have something nice going on here. And we still have, by the way, that low inflation, low interest rates, although they want to hike up the short end. We don't know how it's going to play with, with the yield curve, but we, we still have low interest rates and we still have eight of the 10 largest economies in, on the globe growing. So it's still the kind of environment you want. I don't care if valuations are stretched. I care where the, where the price point is. All right. They're a little stretched. So what? All right, 19 times forward look earning, earnings is not the end of the world. 25 times maybe. 19 is a little above normal. If you can get something right now for 16 or 17 times forward looking earnings, you're probably grabbing something undervalued. Why not go for it? All right, all right, true that, true that. Now, you like to say when things get rocky, you rather sell insurance than buy it, and you see some opportunities in the energy space ahead of this OPEC meeting on Thursday. We also have North Korea action going on. So can you explain your logic and what you have up your sleeve? Well, I believe $58 is a doorway for WTI crude. So what I did when we broke through that barrier, I guess it was late yesterday in the, in the, in the overnight, what I did was I, I sold my, my most profitable oil stock, which was Valero. Some people would think that might be crazy selling your winner. I sold my winner so I could beef up on two of my losers, Apache and Schlumberger. I've been long these guys all year. I've got Apache over the, the Mendoza line a couple times, but now it's fading back to about $40. Uh, Schlumberger is around $61. So what I'm doing is I'm selling puts and calls on both of them, dated out. We're going out here. We're going out to March and April on these because I want it after this extension that we're going to hear about later this week when, when OPEC either does or does not. We're hearing right now from the, uh, what, the Iraqi oil minister, I believe, that they actually are going to push out some kind of production freeze, but we don't really have an end date yet. So I, I do think there will be good news, and these stocks will move based on that. As far as the Apache goes, though, you do need help with natural gas. That's also a natural gas play. Natural gas only trading a little above $3 right now. You're going to need help there. We're going to need a cold winter. Sorry to say it, folks. Right. Oh, I like a cold winter. I'm definitely, I'm definitely prepared. And you're talking about Apache, not the oil Apache, right? I'm talking Apache, Apache Energy. <laughs> I'm just joking around. I'm just joking around. Yeah. APA, right. Well, while, while you're buying and selling puts and options, People are definitely going to be focusing on the buying and selling in stores and online as we have the holiday season coming up. But you know what? Bitcoin has been stealing the show. It's been exploding in the season. So what do you think is more important, Amazon hitting a new record or Bitcoin? Amazon is far more important because it's the dominant retailer in this country today. I think 50 or 55 percent of online sales have gone through the Amazon channel in a, since, since Thursday. Uh, Bitcoin affects a very small amount of people. This is a squeeze. I can't say it's a short squeeze because I don't really know what, I don't trade Bitcoin, so I don't really know what it is, but it, obviously there's a scarcity squeeze and people are chasing for whatever reason. I'm sure a lot of them don't even know what they're doing or what they're chasing. I do play blockchain, however, okay? I am long AMD, I am long NVIDIA. It's not like I don't want exposure to the space, but before I go and get myself long something like Bitcoin or any other cryptocurrency, I want it to trade in a regulated way on a regulated exchange. If it's a futures product or, or an options product, Maybe I'll get involved there. Yeah, well, everyone's talking about it, even our next Fed chair, Jerome Powell, today. But let's finish up with some macro, speaking of that, because I can't let you go without talking about it. We have the, the tax bill negotiating this week, po probably be voted on sometime this week. But ahead of that, we have GDP. So let's just cover an all-encompassing thing going on here. How will the tax bill affect GDP, productivity, if anything, as it stands now? Well, for this quarter just passed, we're going to probably see something like 3.3%, 3.4% for GDP. I think that's, that's a positive and it's fine. The tax bill, if it were to be passed, is not going to impact past data. It will impact forward-looking data. And I don't really know if it does anything for productivity. I'm not sure it does anything for you and I. All right, what I do know what it would do if, if there is a combined tax bill that passes is improve corporate earnings. All right, you're looking to tack on 10 or $11 so to S&P earnings, and that would 
push forward the whole thing we started this segment with. That would be more earnings growth on top of earnings growth, which would still be a positive for the S&P 500 and especially the Russell 2000. But don't get too excited because these guys, have you seen Congress lately? All right. <laughs> have you watched the, the Senate confirmation hearing today and listened to the questions? These are not the sharpest kids on the block. All right. And there is a chance that they don't realize that they have to put together a better, better bill that encompasses more of the population to get, to get everyone behind it. I'm not, I do believe in the first quarter of 2018, we'll probably see something pass. I'm not sure of the quality. Well, that's how we started. That's how we'll end it. Steven, thank you for jumping on cam with me. Always nice to see you. I'll see you on Twitter. Follow Sarge, 986, and maybe we'll see you there, too. Thank you, Olivia.